Good afternoon, everyone. Clouds across our planet are not in the same place they were 15 years ago. We're going to take a look over time how they've changed, where has gotten wetter, where has gotten drier, and we're going to forecast out for the next few years as these gargantuan weather changes start to take hold, as we see right now with this warm blob in the Arctic, right next to record cold across Greenland. Things are definitely turning upside down right now. Article by the Washington Post states that profound planetary changes and global cloud cover caused by global warming. Distribution of all the clouds across the Earth have shifted. I'm going to take you back in time. A look at the effect of galactic cosmic rays on the intertropical convergence zone. Dark blue at the bottom is when we're in a grand solar minimum. Red zonal flow is when we have high sun activity. A bit wider out for you. These measurements were taken covering four different grand solar minimums at different locations across different continents. There's a direct correlation with the cycles in the sun and the galactic cosmic rays reaching our planet. You're going to want to check out Heinrich Svensmark, The Cloud Mystery, to explain it. It's an inverse relationship. We see it time and time again. When we're at a high peak in solar activity, the galactic cosmic rays are lower. When the sun's activity decreases, more galactic rays enter our atmosphere, and during these grand solar minimums are responsible for increasing cloud cover from 15,000 to 18,500 feet, causing anomalous rains, snows, and the albedo effect, and we get into that feedback loop. Looking at NASA Earth Observatory, top graphic is the year 2000, bottom graphic year 2015. Notice the change in the clouds. Top image 2002, Aquamudi satellite. Bottom image 2015. I'll let you draw your own conclusion whether it's drying out or getting wetter. Terramudi satellite, top image year 2000, bottom image 2015. And we start to see wettest ever recorded in 200 years in Australia, in Alberta. 100 and 200 year floods across Italy and France this year. And this follows the pattern of moving tropical convergence zones. This published paper here tracing the effects of little ice age in the tropical lowlands of eastern Mesoamerica talks specifically about how the tropical convergence zone switches more northerly or southerly causing droughts and floods across Mesoamerica this has a vegetation reconstruction history easily discernible where there's more rain and cloud cover. You can see where the vegetation is spiking because it's rainier and more rain means more plants. Has nothing to do with CO2 and us. It's been going on for thousands and thousands of years in a pattern. Continuing on with Washington Post article, expanding subtropical dry zones between 20 and 30 degrees latitude north and south. I'm going to bring you back up here into the South American summer monsoon across several different regions. Can you explain to me such a fluctuation in wet, cool, dry conditions all the way up to dry, warm, drought conditions? From the year 600 to the year 1200, we had nothing to do with that. There were no factories, no cars back then, but look at the pattern and it repeated and it dropped in the modern minimum around 16 to 1800 AD, back to the cool phase again. And now we're back up to the warm again, and we're getting ready to drop back into the cool. These are thousands of locations across the northern hemisphere showing wetter or drier conditions over thousands of years of time. This one goes back specifically 1,000 years. The entire report goes back 3,000 years, but you can see yourself drier and wetter conditions in a natural pattern. Nothing to do with CO2. And then the same reports claiming that it's going to be drier in California and drier in Southern Africa. Well, you know what? It dried out in the South African areas during every grand solar minimum. And these types of reports coming out by paid IPCC scientists talking about climate models and less clouds in some areas. 
That is nothing like what our planet is experiencing right now. These models are defunct. They're not even close. And going back in time again over the super droughts in the 1600s, in the 1400s, where do these spikes and ebbs and flows in temperature as well as precipitation come from? It's not CO2. And then all the while, another Washington Post article blaming CO2 for the pre-Christmas melt. Focusing only on the heat, yet to the right and left, record cold temperatures across northern Asia as well as Greenland. All-time record lows at minus 57 Fahrenheit. Didn't talk about that in the reports, did you? Why not here so you can see it yourself? Jumping over to Climate Realizer, all that blue and purple at the top of the northern hemisphere, that is record cold as well. And if you look, the world's temperatures are only 0.4 C, not 1.5 like they've been telling you in the news. Please notice this. Do some of your own research. Jumping over the, to the December 22nd, temperatures which passed a few days ago, squawking, squawking about this intrusion of warm air coming off of Norway into the North Pole. Yet all the while, forgetting to see that pink, that's minus 45 degrees Celsius. They're not even talking about that. They're only talking about the minus 14 that's pushing up into the Arctic. Look at Knoll School. Greenland's still minus 40 degrees Celsius and a few hundred miles away is where the warm blob is. So you literally have record cold next to record warm in mixing patterns across the Arctic right now. And I love how Science Daily comes out and says, Warming the Arctic may be intensifying the effects of the jet stream. So they're saying that CO2 affects the jet stream. And I couldn't believe it, so I looked on Google and I found almost half a million articles stating the same thing. Now if you look at the jet streams, there's two of them. The polar jet stream as well as the lower latitude jet stream. Notice CO2 freezes at minus 78 C. Literally it turns into dry ice and falls out of the atmosphere. And when we're looking at the cloud bands at 60,000 feet and 38,000 feet, that temperature is at minus 70. That's literally eight degrees away from that CO2 turning into snow and falling out of the atmosphere. There's no possible way that's having an effect on the jet stream. I can't even believe they're allowed to print such false news. Plus the excitation of the molecules at that temperature would have no effect. It's near frozen and falling out of the atmosphere. And then we come to weather network here. The myth of the sun and the sunspot activity is responsible for trends in global warming. You know what? It's not a myth. It's a repeating cycle. And weather network, shame on you for even printing something like that. All the forecasts coming out for solar cycle 25 and 26 are showing us going below 25 sunspot average. That's taking us into the next grand solar minimum, more intense than the Maunder minimum. And I'm going to leave you with this chart that I made myself here overlapping the GISP ice core data with the collapse of the Chinese dynasties. Notice when the temperature drops, the Chinese dynasties in the past collapsed, as well as if you go further back in history, the collapse of the Japanese empires the collapse of the Roman Empire, and the collapses of the monarchies in Europe in the 1300s, in the 1600s. Yet there's so much history recorded that shows when the sun decreases its output, it affects our magnetosphere and we have more clouds here. You can see the ebbs and the flow in our climate system through thousands of years of history without automobiles, without factories, without the influence of so many humans. Yet for some reason, there's a discernible effort to sway you from seeing the truth. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. During these times of change, you're going to need to keep your body healthy. Jump over to getthetea.com. There's a full range of cleanses as well as things to keep your body functioning properly and keeping your immune system at its optimal level.